put it in it. Recording in Go progress. Ahead. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I got it going for the Alice Favor demo and uh, I added an integration test. Basically, it connects and then when you go to issue a credential, there's an error. And I think it's the, there's some, uh, I tried it with the Ascar wallet and with Ascar and Oncred's wallet. And with the Ascar wallet, the error is related to um, one of the marshmallow validations on the DID. So at some point there's some validation really? on the DID that's failing. And then with the Ascar and Oncred's, it was a different error, but I suspect it's the same thing. So it's, it's, it doesn't like DID peer somewhere. You know what it's got to be? Is that on a folder? I, I didn't I didn't look I just I okay. ran through the integration test and it failed and I've actually I I updated Alice Favor and I ran it in Alice Favor and I was getting an error and then I thought oh I should have just done an integration test that would have been easier yeah so I so I did <laughs> anyway so uh, so let uh, me ask I, the question differently did it did it fail in Alice uh, <laughs> I don't know so, <laughs> there was I was joking error. there was an error yeah. somewhere. Actually, I think in the integration test, it failed in Bob. Oh, interesting. Anyway, um, oh, okay. So there's a place where the holder did is sent over for no apparent reason. And and so there must be some checking of that did, um, which we should probably eliminate because it really doesn't matter whether it's a did or any other piece of data. There's no use of it done as it did. Um, why it was ever done in as it did in the first place is a mystery. <clears throat> so that's probably what it is, and it's definitely an unnecessary check. So it's probably the receipt of the holder did, and it's checking to see that it's a did when it has no reason to be a did. So, did you want me to actually track that down and fix it? <sighs> well, let's record it. Um, we got to get it fixed. Um, Anyway, the, the integration test fails, but it's not um, tagged to run as part of the nightly. Okay. Sessions. So it's not going to fail like an integration. It's not going to fail any PRs or anything, but yeah. once, once we fixed it, we should tag it as yeah. uh, a GitHub action, and then it'll run like as part of the of a read pull request. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Anyone? Uh, okay. Um, make sure that issue is in there. Um, we'll get it assigned and shared. Um, Patrick has been working on this one. It'll get in. Um, I think he's pretty close with it. Um, super interesting. What he's done here is um, this is enabling using W3C credentials and, and running the traceability suite. Um, he ran into an issue with it that he's cleaning up and doing that. Um, Daniel, how are we on this one? Is this ready to go? Um, okay, you've already requested a review. Yeah, um, Andrew had some minor feedback. Okay. Um, it, it's just some more of the same type hint corrections that there wasn't a red squiggly line underneath it, so I didn't catch it on my pass. So, okay. um, but just for consistency, I, I can go through and I can probably change oh. that in the next few minutes just to get that okay. to a point where it's ready. And to then go. I'll get it. Um, I'll get it reviewed and and assigned or uh, approved. Um, I've moved this one, as I mentioned, into a um, into a HackMD document just because doing the, doing design docs via GitHub's are really hard. So I'll cover exactly what we're going to do with that. Um, yeah, I haven't looked at that one at all. It's still in draft. So I guess that's okay. This MD document I haven't reviewed. So I think we're up to date. Did rotate. I'm hoping Cyro is going to look at this, but he's um, been pulled into something else, um, but should be on to it after. Um, yeah, um, yeah, highlight when you, when this PR goes in, um, Ian, are you going to do this PR? 
yes. Maybe okay, let's just make sure you put... Yeah, that's next on my list, actually. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> make sure you put breaking in the um, in the PR title. Yes, yes, I yeah. will. That's Thanks. why I put breaking in the, in the title of the... Exactly, issue. yeah. Um, Jamie, with this one, do you have improvements or you're just looking for someone else to give you improvements? It sounds like you've made really good progress. No, I like the dev container and there was one example for multi-tenant configuration there already, but it works really good even having like multiple agents open. So that's what I'm using to develop right now. And it, I'm okay. just going to have like, yeah, so it's more obvious that you can run multiple agents and they can... You can run it just on localhost and stuff. So I just want to update that. Yeah. Yeah, Jamie Jamie was showing me that his setup last week and I suggested that he add some documentation and check it out. And yeah, maybe, okay. Maybe we'll do a demo in the Acapug. Excellent. Because he's, um, got, he's got like the, the debugger hooked up to all of his, like multiple agents and he's got the debugger hooked up to all of them. So it's pretty slick. That's like, that's good. Um, on this one, Ian, this is what I meant to ask you. Um, sorry, this was the goal and how you got into the, um, break with that, but were you able to use reuse? Uh, well, I could use connection reuse to reuse the connection, but then. Yeah, that's what I mean. You were broke. able to do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it, oh, broke good. Got, it broke when I got to the point of, um, yeah. issue <clears throat> credential. But this part actually worked. Okay. Um, well, can you. I mean, it it works, but the connection doesn't work. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. Anyway, I added that that uh, there was an integration test. Yeah. For that you had flagged. Yeah. And I, I updated it. I can't remember what I did. Anyway, okay. I, went through, I tested it with Alice Faber and I, I opened up multiple connections between Alice and Faber and confirmed that it was just using the same one. Okay. Okay, those are the ones that I wanted. Um, do we need, want a new release? Um, so, um, sorry, I, I was I just talking over someone? I don't know. I'll go nope. ahead. Um, uh, so something I'd like to do, um, I would like to have a release soon with all the did peer updates. I think that would be really okay. nice. Um, but something I, I would like to get around to and haven't had a chance to yet is going back to the Akpai AFJ interop setup right. thing that I had and test things yeah. out and make sure that there's no small tweaks that need to be made to the implementation to help those two align um yeah just haven't had a chance to do that yet but I'd, I'd be really interested in doing that so we can catch the issues before we have it committed to a release i guess okay sounds good okay um any any other topics before i jump into the um what we're doing about uh an on credit in w3c format All right, um, <clears throat> so this has sort of evolved and it's been quite interesting to see it evolve. Um, uh, the and on creds work is complete. There's one little tiny tweak that might still get done, but the and on creds rust work is complete and a dev release has been put out with all of the and on creds in it. I believe it's there. Now that I think about it, it might have been something else, but it will be shortly. And and in the main branch, all the um, major merging has been done. So W3C format credentials is supported in an on creds. So then the issue became, okay, we got to get it into AFJ and Akapai. How are we going to do that? And um, so what we've gotten to is agreement on the interoperability components um, how we're going to use issue and present protocols, and in particular, the attachments to use when using W3C, um, and then behavior changes in issuers, holders, and verifiers. 
um, in, in figuring out how to trigger, um, when to see what to do when they're in there and then some notes on in and out of scope. So, um, we have, we've decided to go with the, um, uh, RFC 809, which is still a pull request, but we're still going to go with it, which is the W3R, W3C um, data integrity attachments. Um, and, and we're going to go forward with that. And uh, Timo put together test vectors to show what um, those different things look like. Um, so there's a repo of, of test vectors um, that he's created and a set of documents that outline those, including publishing, um, you know, credential thefts and link secrets and so on, so that um, tests could be built with that. Um, in particular, the offer, the request, and the issue are highlighted in that. And so if I come down here, I've got an offer. So this is what the attachment would look like of an offer, which the big thing here is that there's a binding method and it can be an on-creds link secret. And that's where the offer information for an on-creds is put, or it could be a didcom signed attachment, which would be used if you're going to have a, have, for example, a did key um, with a, uh, a proof in it. And so there would be a signed attachment associated with it. Um, if the signed attachment is there, here's what the signed attachment should look like and it and, and how it should be um, defined. Um, once you have an offer, you get a request back from the holder. So it would have this information. Interestingly, Ian, this used to be called issuer did, now is called entropy because it's not actually a did. <laughs> so that's where I think you're getting into uh, that that error that you saw is, is coming out of it. Um, I, I again. Remember, sorry, I remember in an on creds, there was something that changed from issuer did to issuer ID. Is that now changing again to entropy or? No, um, this is holder did. This oh, okay. used to be holder did, and now it's entropy because it is nothing but a string. And why it was ever called a holder did when it had no association, no one knows. Somebody made a, a call somewhere that was perhaps um, not the best. <clears throat> um, so that's the request. And then finally you get a, an issuance. And here's what a credential looks like, including the proof value and so on. So everything goes into here. Um, for those that haven't seen this already, um, there is no <clears throat> an on creds context. We just stuck with the straight um, data integrity plus vocab. Vocab allows us to have arbitrary things in here without having to have a specific reference to what age is or what name is. So that gets us away from having specific things for the credential. Um, and then anything sort of and non creds related, including revocation, is in this proof value is encoded in this proof value. So it's a data integrity proof using the crypto suite and on creds, and everything about that is encapsulated in this um, base sixty four object. And then this is an example where we have a credential with two signatures associated with it and an on creds and a EDSA um, credential using did key. So there you go. Um, so that's an offer, an issue and a request. So that's what is happening on the issuance side. So a new attachment, and that was where my question came up of, can we make this pluggable or do we add a new one in? So um, that is something that we'd like to figure out is do we do an, a, 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 a enable it to be plugged now or do we do this as, as yet another attachment format that is hard coded in there? Any, Daniel, you had comments on that one? Sorry, I was distracted. Could you repeat the last? Or thing? not. 
10 seconds. <laughs> um, comments on whether we make this a pluggable thing now. Um, oh, oh for... right. Um, so I, I think there is at least an easily identifiable place to make it pluggable, but I don't mm -hmm. necessarily feel strongly about whether we do that now or not. Okay. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think, okay. Yeah, I think it's fair to like just keep things the way they are, especially as we, you know, we can focus on other more important things like getting the actual attachment format implemented. Exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's definitely some weird, ugly in there. And um, some like Python <laughs> that's kind of heavily JavaScript, TypeScript influenced. Um, and I, I, I think it just okay. kind of ends up being a little weird in Python. Um, but yeah, we can worry about that later. Okay. Um, present proof protocol will use the existing diff presentation exchange. So RFC 510 diff presentation exchange. So we are actually making the shift where um, presentation ex exchange is used for the request instead of a, an anon creds presentation request. Um, a submission and a presentation is then provided. Again, these are links to the test vectors. Um, I had this question was more for Timo because the submission that he put in is very simple. Um, it turns out a submission is a item in inside the presentation. So um, a a an unsigned part of the presentation is um, uh, is where the submission goes. Evidently, that seems weird to me now that I think about it. But there you go. Oh, I guess not. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, I think we lose functionality in restrictions. We, we don't have as powerful a restriction language and um, I'm not exactly sure how revocation goes. Um, the AFJ folks are, are going ahead with this one. So we'll probably learn from them. Um, but anyway, that's something to keep in mind and then we'll make any clarifications necessary and possibly if we have to, um, changes to this RFC to support this. Does that make sense? So this is something we've long talked about. Um, Timo's done a bunch of exploratory work and figured out, yeah, we might as well just do it. We already have presentation, presentation exchange supported. And um, for the most part, as with an on credits presentation, it's the controller that constructs the request and then passes it on. So it's not that much in Akapai. So that's the way we'll go with that. So those are the attachment formats. Any comments on those? Surprise? Maybe a minor comment on, on what you just said there about the controller being in charge of the creation of uh, the yeah. requests. Um, I, one thing I wonder about is if it, again, I don't think this is necessarily something we need to worry about initially, but I, I wonder if there's room for, um, like uh, another API on Actify that will construct like uh, a basic and non-creds um, presentation request for you or something. Presentation exchange, okay. especially like all the presentation definition objects. Um, yeah. If you go and you look at the docs, it's it, there's an overwhelming number of options and and things you can yeah. do with presentation definitions. Um, uh, enough that it's been kind of a struggle like internally at Indicio for us to be able to pick up and understand what the heck we need to construct in order to do JSON LD creds today um, okay. and request presentations. Um, so just in a very similar thought space to like revocation is complicated, so Akapai should do it. Um, I, I kind of have yeah. similar okay. feelings about presentation um, exchange formats and, okay. and uh -oh. the APIs that we use to interact with them. Um, but yeah, maybe that's like an additional API, um, yeah, as opposed to the only API. So you still have like the the full control if you want it, but if you want to just do, okay, like basic stuff or straightforward stuff anyway, um, there might be something like yeah. that available to us. Yeah. But. One of the things that I also like to see is, and I think it belongs in Akapai, is at least a way to say things like dollar now um you know in a, in a an on credits presentation 
you know, so, or, or now minus 18 years um, that inserts the proper values at runtime. And, and that shouldn't be up so that you can have a presentation request template, if you will, that inserts the right values. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, it does the date in calculation. If it's a date in field, it does a, uh, Unix time calculation, if it's a Unix time field and so on, um, that would seem to be a, a nice helper as well. So I think yeah. that's along the same lines. Yeah, for sure. Less to do in, in an on creds. And, and what you're saying is there's more in presentation exchange that would need that. Yeah. Okay. So um, with that, I'm going to jump to here's what changes um, issuer. The proposal messages are out of scope. Um, only the issuer via the offer can initiate issuing in an on creds W3CVC. So they use the 809 attachment with the non creds bind holder binding. Um, obviously, we're assuming that the issuer and holder can both support an on creds W3CVCs. Um, there is a question about the V1 and V2 VCDM and uh, the verifiable credential data model, um, but not a big issue. It's barely any changes, so it's not a big issue. Um, issuer is no longer encoding the credential attributes because those is the, those are handled inside and on creds now. So the issuer um, encoding is is out of the way. And then there's future possibilities of, of making, you know, the holder being able to initiate a W3C um, and so on. Um, but the basic trigger is um, for, t for the scope of work happening right now is the uh, 80 809 attachment. On the verifier side, the verifier uses a 510 attachment to request an on creds presentation in W3C VP, VP format. Um, verifiers can pro uh, process presentations with a 510 attachment containing an on creds W3C VP. So they would receive, so they would send a diff presentation submission. They would receive a presentation and see that the, it's a data integrity proof with a non creds, um, crypto signature, and that would trigger processing it as an non creds VP. Um, again, encoding is handled, and I'm not exactly sure where that all fits. So this encoding um, has to be looked at of, of where the responsibility of doing the encoding and checking. I'm pretty sure it's now in an on creds. Um, uh, so <clears throat> it doesn't have to be done at, in Akapai, but we have to verify that. And finally, the holder behavior. Um, holders can receive credentials using the 592 or 593, which is Indy attachments in 592 also, um, and 593 is JSON LD, um, and the new 809. So th this is an addition is the 80, uh, 0809 attachment formats. Um, holders send the request message in the same attachment format as the offer. So if it's a if it came as a 592, you respond when a 592, if it came as an 809, respond as an 809. And um, holders can receive existing 592 presentation requests, so normal and on creds, and 510 presentation requests that could be um, and on receipt of a 510, the holder includes a non-creds credentials in when finding suitable credentials to use in the presentation. And so if an, a non-creds credential is found, obviously it needs to be put into um, W3C VC format as a presentation submission. All right. That's, that's the trigger there, out of scope. Um, <clears throat> oh, um, and on creds credentials can be sent as VPs, whether they are received as legacy or W3C VC format. It, it should work the same. And I think that should be pretty straightforward. And then finally, in and out of scope. Um, 
we're not going to worry about issuing credentials with multiple signatures as part of the code with us. Um, and we'll we'll do the creation of the AADH test. Um, I'll be leaning on um, Sheldon to work on that. Okay, that's enough on that. Um, hopefully that is helpful. And um, if anyone has any feedback on that and guidance, uh, the group that won the code with us is called What's Cooking? Um, Golda, who's at IAW, um, is leading that team. Daniel Hardman's involved with the team and then it's some other developers. So we're bringing some new people on. So that could be a challenge. Um, I've asked Ian to um, sort of oversee their work, but um, certainly if um, would welcome people's input on that, if you don't mind joining a discord um, for conversations about that, uh, it would be appreciated. But, you know, weighing in on how things should be done would be helpful. And that's about it. Daniel. So I had a quick question that came up as you were talking about the the behavior changes. So when you when you say proposal is out of scope, is that s simply for the code with us effort? Like, yeah. is there a proposal uh, the proposal defined in the attachment format still? Yes. Okay. Is there? Shoot, I don't think there is. Okay. That is a good point. Um, I'll put that in. It, it is still a PR, so uh, I will put that in as a as a comment, or you could put it in as a comment. Um, because you're right, proposal needs to be needs to be there. Yeah. Would you happen to have a, a link to the slides or or to the, yes, the PR you mentioned? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Copy. So into there. That's the Thank deck. You. Um, the other one I wanted to send was the HackMD document that I did, which I'm not seeing. And I don't know, again, how much you want to go through this, so I wouldn't be surprised, but, um, it, it, I, I think I covered most of it here. <clears throat> where so this first part is what I just said um what functions are we going to wrap everywhere from here down with stuff that had already been put in and it's code level so I didn't want to weigh in on it but this is where you know things will have to be adjusted okay cool cool thanks all have a delightful day. Have a good day. Thanks. Bye -bye. See ya. Yeah.